Hey, it's me, John in the desert, and we just finished up on a super exciting build. We're building a, uh, um, a search and rescue vehicle. We started off with a Polaris Ranger, and um, I'm ready to do a debut video on it, but I can't find my number one shop assistant, my son Jamie. He uh, he's aces in the shop, and he's been helping me, but now comes time to film the video, and I can't... Wait, dude! What's up? Huh? What? No, oh, I, I wasn't sleeping. No, I was just, uh, you know, doing some uh, research and quality assurance here, making sure this bar is right where we need it to go. Oh, yeah, all these clips. Yeah, they, yep, they're holding it in really good right here. Tell you what, this seat seems uh, mounted. Yeah, nice. whatever. Um, I caught him snoozing yeah. on the job. But, hey, stay tuned. We're going to show you this build. It's awesome. You know, we do a lot of things here at Coyote Adventure, and... We do our land tours, we do our, uh, our, our, our guided trips, we do a lot of things like that, um, off-road training, but to support all of the vehicles that we have, we have a pretty good little production shop, and we can, you know, grinders, welders, all that other good stuff that you need in a shop, and we're often asked to build other things for other people, and we've built off-road vehicles for a wide variety, one that I'm particularly proud of, for the last 15 years I've been building search and rescue vehicles to help uh, Grand County Search and Rescue here in Moab do the things that we need to do and being uh, a medic as well as a search and rescue member I kind of know what it takes to get into the backcountry and get out with our patients um, in the safest way possible so we've built a lot of vehicles over the year and now I'm going to show you one uh, if you look right behind me here boom here's our latest and greatest build and for this build, we started off with the 2020 Polaris Ranger. This is the 1000. It's got a little get up and go, and it's, but it's not a perfect rescue vehicle. So we take these, we reconfigure the roll cages, and we add all the peripheral things that we need here in Grand County to help us facilitate those rescues. Let me show you a few of those things now. Probably most noteworthy is we add the ability to carry a Stokes litter. To do that, we need to cut out the real ro rear roll cage and make it a single seat in the rear and create some slide tracks that will um, allow the Stokes litter to slide right in. A head mount so the litter locks in place very positively. And something that's very important to us is the fact that we have now our patient completely confined within the roll cage structure of the vehicle. So heaven forbid if something were to go wrong, uh, they are fully protected once again. That litter's not going anywhere and they've got some pretty good rigidity to hold them in place. Also, um, when we have the EMTs, the medics join us, I have got additional storage, not only here on top of the rack, but also on the roof. We try to keep that roof weight down as much as possible. But then we added a additional side box for carrying supplies, whether it's the medic supplies or our basic rescue supplies that we as search and rescue carry with us. Also, we've mounted uh, the VHF radio that we use here in the county. And walking around the front, we've added a 5,000 pound single pole winch. And up here in front, we have added a very small but effective, effective control panel. So let me turn the key on here. And uh, we have our overhead lights. We have our flashing reds and blues. We have our dome light, backup lights, right hand light, left hand light for illuminating our scenes at night. With that in mind, when we get to those scenes, we do always need more supplies. So on this side of the vehicle, we have another box as well. But let me show you how this bike rack that we have here works. All right, as a single person operation, I can just simply take the bike, spin it around, one person, drop it in, and add a strap. And just that quickly, we are back down the trail. So bike rack has been added. Um, nice platform if we do need to stand on it. On these two brackets here, the wheeled litter mount that I just don't happen to have that turns this into essentially a wheelbarrow, it clamps on here because this distance is the exact same width as the litter itself. So this is holding the wheel for the wheeled litter operation. Add a different tail lights to it. <laughs> the uh, search and rescue insignia that we put on all of our vehicles. And then there's a blank say here for the county star. So in this case, it's Grand County. 
And once again, you can see that aluminum rack. And why did we go aluminum on the top? We're trying to keep the weight down, minimize that overhead weight because uh, the trails here are pretty gnarly and keeping the weight down is in everybody's best interest. The last thing we have in store for this, it's gonna to happen tomorrow. It's not gonna be on this video. I'll try to get a future one going. But uh, pulling the tires and wheels off, we're in head, we have the portal boxes, which are an external gear box that not only lowers the gear ratio, it makes the vehicle wider, a little taller, and we'll be able to run 35 inch tires here. So it'll have a much more aggressive, wide stance and much more capable for the off-road trails here in Moab. So once again, I'd like to thank you for watching our latest build here, our 2020 Ranger Search and Rescue Vehicle. It's been a lot of fun. If you like what you saw, go ahead and click the like button. Feel free to subscribe to our channel. We always have cool builds coming up and updates on old ones. Um, right now, this is John in the desert saying, hey, I'd like to hang out, but right now, I gotta go.